In this video, I'm going to share with you two stoves you likely have never heard of before, which is really unfortunate. They are the Pico Grill 85 and its big brother, the Pico Grill 239. If you're interested in hearing more about these amazing little stoves, keep watching. All right, before we get started taking a look at these stoves, there's a few things I want to mention. To begin with, this is not going to be a full review of each of these stoves, although I've had them for some time. Uh, I just haven't had the opportunity to really put them through their paces, mostly because of the fire ban here in Nova Scotia, which today has been lifted due to some heavy rain, which gives me an opportunity to do some more testing, of course. But, okay, so where did I get these stoves? Well, this is an interesting story. One of my viewers who lives in Europe reached out to the owner of the company in Switzerland where these stoves are made and suggested that he maybe he'd like to send me a couple for testing and review. Um, I thought that was a very kind offer of him. He did. The owner contacted me and said he had never considered selling these stoves in Canada or the U.S. because he didn't think they were something we would want. They're designed for ultralight hiking and he didn't think that we would want that type of stove. And I assured them there is definitely a market for these stoves here in North America. Now, because of that, they're not available here in North America yet. So this is where your part comes in. If after I show you these stoves, you think that they are something you might like to get your hands on, and I'm sure you will, then you're going to have to reach out to the company and see about shipping them over to you. What may have to happen, likely will have to happen, is that a Canadian distributor will have to, or a Canadian or American or both distributor will have to be found who will ship these things in and then ship them out to customers here. Uh, that means a bit of work on your part. I'm fortunate and I know that, but uh, I would like to see everybody get a chance to check out these amazing two stoves. So once again, I'm going to give you a close-up of the assembled stoves and then I'm going to take them apart, put them back in their packages. I'm going to give you the statistics or the specifications for the two stoves, put them back together. And of course, you know, we've got to build a fire in them, right? Okay, keep watching. All right, so let's start with the Pico Grill 85. And this is how it comes to you, or it came to me at least, in this nice little envelope, kind of a Kudura type material. All it really needs to hold it in place. Now look how thin that is. Simply amazing. I mean, simply amazing. As I mentioned, these were designed and are manufactured in Switzerland, and they're made of a spring stainless steel that does a really good job of standing up to the heat. You can tell from the discoloration that I've had a number of fires in them. They will take a set and they will warp slightly, but it is anticipated by the manufacturer. In fact, in the instructions, it talks about how to set it up for your first burn so that it will take the shape that you want to keep it in for future burns. So that's what it is. Look at the size of this thing. Let's do some dimensions and some weights. So to begin with, this comes in, and I will be looking at my notes, at three ounces. Yes, you heard me right, three ounces or 85 grams, hence the name Pickle Grill 85. A scant three ounces for a spring stainless steel stove. Simply amazing, especially one of this size. Speaking of size, it's in five and a half inches in this dimension, which is 14 centimeters, and eight and a quarter inches in this dimension, which is 21 centimeters. So let's take this rod out, and this rod is important. It comes with the stove. It's what help retains its shape when you're using it, but it also is what is the pot stand for the stove, as you'll see in a minute. All right, because it's made of spring steel, that's it. You just let go and it will come into this kind of a oblong shape. There is a floor plate that will put you push down with your fingers, snaps into two grooves. You can see the projections out the side, and this is the fully assembled stove. Trying to give you some close-ups on it. There's the floor plate. One thing should be really obvious, there's no base plate in this, so it is important that when you go to use these that you use them on a fire safe surface, either stone or metal or, or something you know is not combustible. I'm going to be using it in, in my fire pit here today, which has lots of gravel, wet gravel after the rain, of course. Yeah, look at this. Now, here's the little stainless steel bar, which sets in on the top, and there are grooves designed for it. And this is, I have to hold it in place with my fingers, 
that not only keeps the stove from spreading out too far, but it is what allows you to use very small pots. Speaking of pots, the manufacturer recommends that you pots, use pots up to one and a half liters in size. Uh, you know, that's a relative thing. Some pots are wider and some pots are taller and more narrow. So it's meant for, you can certainly use a small like 750 mil titanium cup on there, but you can go right up to a twice that size in a one and a half liter pot. Very simple design. Holes on both sides to act as feed ports when you have a pot on top and lots of ventilation at the top as well. So even though there's no higher standoff, not necessary. There is, however, higher crossbar standoffs, which you can purchase from the company on their website if you want to add to them as accessories. Uh, mine didn't come with it, and I don't feel deprived because it works just fine. I'm also going to show you inside. I won't set it up for it today, but if you look at the base plate or the grill, you'll see two half moon project or cutouts on either side, left and right. That's to allow a trangia to set down inside and a few other stoves as well. But basically it holds a trangia in place and uh, yeah, it works well. Now it looks a little tall for a trangia, but I've done it and we'll do some tests in another video and it's working out very well that way. All right, so that is the Pico Grill 85. Let me grab the other stove. All right, this is the larger brother. This is the Pico Grill 239. Now, if you're following, and the other one was Pico Grill 85 because it was 85 grams, you would assume that this one must be 239 grams. In fact, it's only 235 grams, uh, so 8.3 ounces. Now, let me take it out of its package. Again, just as thin. This is a big stove, quite a big stove. Comes with a couple of pieces in accessory or in with it to use. So it also comes with one of these uh, U-shaped bars to run across the top, but it comes with another piece. Like th this is used for a couple of things. It's what holds the stove flat. I just pulled it out. I'll put it back in to show you. It holds the stove flat, but it also acts as a set of skewers if you want to put sausages, hot dogs on, and it also acts to hold a trangia in place, and I'll, I'll demonstrate quickly. All right, so there's the stove again. You can see how the bars go through slots designed into the stove to hold it shut because, of course, once you take that out, it also wants to spring open. A little bit different. There's a little bit more support to this one. So again, you have that fold down fire grate inside the stove. It hinges right down and locks into place, but there are extra supports on the bottom. Let's see if I can get it there, get it at an angle. Uh, cross supports on the bottom to further support the extra weight that would be inside this larger stove. Like the other stove, this piece would be used across the top. I'll show you that. Across the top like that so that you can use smaller pots on it because Look at the size of this, it's huge. So now you can use smaller pots on it, right up to a three liter pot. That's what's recommended by the manufacturers is up to three liters. And again, there are some accessories that you can get with this stove if you're able to get your hands on it, such as a set of crossbars that go on the top. And again, it has feed ports on both sides. I think I should be able to show you the Pico grill cutout in this, and again, made of stainless steel. Extremely lightweight. I didn't give you the dimensions of this. By the way, both stoves work like this. The bottom just folds back up and now you're back into that super flat, super lightweight uh, design. So what is the size of this one? So uh, fl flat, it is seven and a half inches top or seven and a quarter inches top to bottom, which is 18.5 centimeters. End to end, it measures in 11.25 inches, which is 30 centimeters. And what I didn't do with the other stove was give you the dimensions once it's assembled. So what I will do is put all this information in the video description below so you can not only the weights of it, but the dimensions of it in its flat state and in its opened upstate. All right, one last thing I want to do is show you how you would use this for a trangia. So I assemble the stove again, and if you'll notice, there are cutouts at two levels. At that lower level, you would run these through side to side, as you can see now, and it's just the right distance to put a trangia in between those two spring steel uh, bars. Okay, 
there's only one thing left to do. Let's set them up in the fireplace and have a fire in them. Now, the only thing is I can only show one of them at a time because my fireplace isn't big enough for the two of these. But we'll build a fire in them, I'll put a pot on, and uh, we'll just show the demonstration. Then we'll wrap up with a few more comments. So I have the Pico Grill 85 set up in my fire pit, and uh, <laughs> it sounds like I'm making excuses. I know. Two things. You mentioned when I opened up that uh, I had rain overnight, good amount of rain, enough to soak the woods down to allow me to have fires today, lifted the fire ban. The downside of that is if you come out after the, the morning after the rain, all the wood is wet. So I've been looking around for some wood that I've split out. I've split out some. It's still damp. But uh, we'll see, even the birch bark is damp. So all I've done is so far is just put a little bit of birch bark on the bottom, some small twigs, which didn't really snap well, but if the birch bark gets enough heat, it'll dry them out anyway. They're softwood twigs. And then once we get a little bit of a flame going, I will... Oh, look at the birch bark struggling to get going here. Not often that you have trouble with birch bark, right? Now that nice open hole on the bottom here, maybe I can get it going from a couple spots, allows me to stick a match or in this case a piece of lip birch bark inside to help light the stove up. All right, let's see what that does. Well, just let this go for a minute. And I, from my experience in using this so far, it's got great ventilation all around the bottom, all around the middle part, just above the fire grate, and at the top. So, you know, I, it's not hampered, at least not severely hampered, by not having a higher set of standoff or pot stands on top of it. Uh, you can see, even though everything was wet, it's starting to catch on. I expect it to be smoky because of the dampness and because of the birch bark, but give it a minute here and then I'll throw in a little bit of maple and yeah, I guess it's pretty much all maple that I have right here right now and as I already mentioned make sure you have it on a fire safe surface I guess optionally you could take out a plate of some time some type if you wanted to carry under it but then of course you're adding to the overall weight I'd say that's catching on let's throw in a couple of small pieces here to start Oh, the splits, I like to make my splits small. Uh, what's that, four inches? Maybe not quite, three and a half inches. Just because some, I do so many wood stove tests. I can throw one in it from the top, I guess. That'll drop down. Yep, that's starting to catch. With a vengeance. I'm just gonna give it a minute more to be for a little less smoke and then I'll put a pot on. I just want to show you the effect of putting a pot on top of a stove, this stove specifically. Catching on nicely, catching on nicely. Okay, there's not a whole lot of smoke, although I can see some inside, but the wood's catching on. So the pot I'm dropping on today is a new pot to me, something that uh, I've just started playing with, ooh, that's a little smoky, isn't it? Give it a second, see what happens. All right, it's getting better already. Um, this is new from Uberlieben, and they sent it to me for testing and review. This is their Uberlieben Kessel in titanium. They're a generation two Kessel with some improvements over the first one, the one I have in stainless steel, and in titanium. And so far, I love it, but that's for another video. But you can see, it pretty much covers the whole stove. So this would probably be about a liter and a half. That's why they say a liter and a half is as big as you want to go. Yeah, see the smoke is starting to diminish now. And that was because there was still so much wet underneath. And once you put a pot on top, it changes the airflow dramatically. And it has to reconfigure itself. And it's done that very well. Look at that. I mean, there's a lot of heat, a lot of flame coming out of the feed ports, but uh, yeah, this thing produces a lot of heat and that's what it's all about. Okay, so this was the Pico Grill 85. Now I'm going to have to wait a while until that burns down so that I can set up the Pico Grill 239 in here.
All right, here we go with round two, the Pico Grill 289. Oh, 239, sorry, 239 is the designation for this stove, weighing in at 235 grams of spring stainless steel. Look at the size of this thing. It's got to be, well, physically, it looks like two and a half times the size, but I bet you it's four to five times the volume inside. I put about the same amount of birch bark and sticks inside, and it still hasn't come up to the halfway point. Now, let's get this stove going, see how quickly it'll light up. Again, it's nice to have those little holes in the bottom. And oh, there's some on the other side. I can feed both, get a started from both sides at the same time. That's great. Drop that in. And again, there'll be a lot of flame and a lot of smoke for a minute as the birch bark catches on. Then I'll start throwing in some little pieces. <laughs> the pieces of wood look so small compared to the size of this stove. So obviously with this stove, you won't have to process your wood down so much. Geez, I'm gonna put throw some in now. Get the fire going. Yeah, that looks pretty good. See, I can feed them right in, but you know, I could feed in probably seven, eight inches, maybe 10 inch pieces. I can hear some expansion of the steel. Uh, not an issue. Kind of expect it in, in a lot of ways, I guess. All right, we'll give it a second for that to catch on before I try and put the pot on here. I expect we'll see less of a dampening effect with the pot because the pot, as you'll see, covers about half of the, the opening on the top. And this is where that little bar that goes across the top uh, is important to hold in shape and to support the pots. I had to pull the camera back a little bit to get it all in frame just because of how much bigger it is. All right, the wood is catching on. I think I'll throw a few more small ones in just for the fun of it. Well, because I have them, I guess. Use them up and they're gonna smoke because they're damp. All right, I think that's starting to catch on. Let me grab my kettle. And as you can see, that's, well, let's put it forward a little bit. There. This stove will take a big pot. I can hear the titanium already starting to expand from the heat. No dampening down of the flames whatsoever, of course. How could they, unless I cover the whole top over? That is putting out some heat. All right, it was just meant to be a quick demonstration. Let's wrap up with a few more comments. Okay, you know, I have the um, Pico Grill 239 still going in the fireplace. I took the kettle off because it had come to a boil, but I, I didn't wait for the, uh, the stove to burn out before I, I came to this, uh, this point in the video. Uh, I'm looking at that now and I'm thinking that is practically a fireplace replacement. I mean, it's giving off a lot of heat, a lot of flame, and if all you wanted to do was just sit around and watch a fire, and who doesn't enjoy doing that, but don't want to build a big fire on the ground, that's a good size for doing exactly that. Almost like a portable fire pit coming in at uh, eight ounces. You know, you can't beat that. Can't beat that at all. Okay. This was just meant to be an introductory video. Uh, I've had these for a while, as I mentioned, but I have not had a lot of experience with them yet. This is probably about fire seven or eight in each of the stoves. I have used alcohol. I have used charcoal with them. Uh, it doesn't work so well with pellets, at least without some modification because the pellets just drop right through. But charcoal, yeah, the, these things do work well with charcoal. Uh, here's the thing, as I mentioned, they're not available in North America yet. And that's where you come in. Again, I say this, if you're interested and you really want to see if you can get your hands on these, and as you can see, <laughs> They're an amazing little stove. 
then reach out, comment in the comments section below, and of course I'm going to provide you the contact information for the company. Let them know that you're interested. And if you have or know of a distributor, or you are a distributor of stoves, then uh, consider reaching out to the company and seeing what you can't work out. I know there's a lot of stoves on the market. There's a lot of good stoves. I've got a lot of good stoves, but I don't have any stoves, I think, this light that work this well. And that's what I think it's uh, the Swiss engineering. Can't beat this thing, right? Okay. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for future videos, put those in the comment section below. But until I see you again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.